Uh, Genesis 2.9 tells us that God created uh, green plants pleasant to the sight and good for food. Uh, plants use the amazing process of photosynthesis to trap energy from the sun, to put together carbon dioxide molecules from the air, water molecules from the soil, uh, to make sugar molecules a basic uh, building block for all of the other food groups. Where do the plants get the carbon dioxide? We breathe it out. Animals breathe out the carbon dioxide. Plants absorb that carbon dioxide. Uh, they absorb the water. They release oxygen from the water molecules so we can breathe it in, burn the sugar to produce the carbon dioxide that they can absorb to make more sugar. You may get the idea all of these parts have to fit together at the same time. That's one thing as we look at the creation account, how God made plants, animals, people, all the physical features of the universe to fit together in an intricate pattern reflecting his glory. Food, oxygen, medicine, fuel, raw materials. Surely the Lord designed plants for our benefit. The rich diversity of flowering plants and the many purposes they serve all point to a wise and compassionate creator. Though magnificent in bloom, the glory of the flower quickly fades. Scripture likens man's life on earth to a flower so quick to pass away. Therefore, how important it is for each of us to seek everlasting life today. Then God said, Let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth. So God created every living thing that moves, and God saw that it was good. In the book of Genesis, we read that God created everything to be very good. And though sin has since injured creation, the fish, the birds, and all creatures still testify to God's goodness and wisdom. We'll now turn our attention to the Lord's incredible creatures. Living in the waters of the world are creatures more magnificent than mankind could ever imagine. The enormous assortment of ocean dwellers speaks of the unlimited ingenuity of our great creator. And each sea creature has been designed with remarkable functionality. God equipped the octopus with a form of jet propulsion, suction cup technology, and self-adjusting camouflage far superior to any man-made design. Watch as this giant octopus morphs into a rock with algae. Its color, shape, and texture are all transformed in an instant. The squid on the left is a male. He shows a brownish-red courtship pattern toward the female while simultaneously showing a white fighting pattern on his opposite side to ward off rival males. As he switches sides, his markings actually flip. Dual simultaneous signaling demonstrates God's engineering supremacy. Underwater symbiotic relationships reveal perfect foresight in design planning. Sea anemones are poisonous, yet God has enabled certain fish to safely cohabitate in their environment. For example, clownfish are designed with an immunity to the anemone's poison. This could not have been inherited, as prior generations would have been killed and gone extinct before evolving a beneficial immunity. The schooling pattern of certain fish is still being researched. The ability for fish to dart with synchronized movements reveals the guiding hand of a grand conductor. Different species of fish have been relegated to dwell at specific levels of the ocean depths. This capability is the result of a specially designed air bladder, which secretes gases from the bloodstream, regulating the pressure maintaining equilibrium, allowing the fish to survive at various water pressures within a range determined by the Creator.
One of my absolutely favorite sea creatures is the pearly nautilus or the chambered nautilus. Here's a shell like you might find in a Florida shell shop. And when you cut these down the middle, woo, look at that, all these little chambers inside. Uh, the animal that lives in the last chamber here is essentially a squid. It has lots of little tentacles coming out the front like that. All these little chambers enable it to regulate its buoyancy like a submarine does. Inside that amazing squid, uh, there's a brain. There's an eye that sees the world like we do. Uh, there's a digestive system with salivary glands and a pancreas gland. They have three different hearts. They're as complex inside as we are. And yet, uh, fossils of this kind of creature are among the first to be found. Initial complexity, a marvelous testimony to God's creativity. When I look at the sea creatures that God has created, I look in particular to the fish. They are amazing creatures, starting with their streamlined efficiency, the fact that they are designed to extract oxygen from the water in such an efficient manner, the fact that they have such a pleasing aesthetic values, and also, of course, the great quantities of food they provide for man. Fish have always been fish, according to the fossil record. Yes, fish certainly are an incredible feature of God's living creation. The obvious sophistication variety and beauty of sea creatures shout out a master artist created all things for his good pleasure Birds are among the most captivating creatures on Earth. We marvel at their spectacular colors, their streamlined shapes, and their ability to fly with grace and ease. For centuries, man attempted to imitate the flight of a bird. It was only in the 20th century that he succeeded in controlled flight. To this day, in order to improve the aerodynamics of the plane, Man will return to study God's marvelous avian design. Consider some of the Creator's design features. A bird's bones are lightweight and virtually hollow. They're supported inside by struts and honeycombed with air sacs. These lightweight bones are designed so efficiently for flight that the bird's feathers usually weigh more than its entire skeleton. Even its beak is designed to save weight made of lightweight horn rather than heavy bone. Birds also have two strong sets of breast muscles, a large set to control the wing's downstrokes and a smaller set to control the upstrokes. And only birds have been created with feathers. Feathers insulate the bird from the sun's heat, protect it from the cold, waterproof the body, and create wing and tail surfaces necessary for flight. Each feather is connected to a nerve and controlled by a muscle. This precision muscular control helps the bird balance in the air, steer and brake when slowing down to land. Birds, they're just truly spectacularly amazing. Uh, they're well known, of course, for the feather, which is a masterpiece of strength and lightness combined in one thing. They have a uh, little system of barbs, barbules, kind of like hooks and eyelets and Velcro that can zipper together uh, the little feathers that stick out from the main shaft. And they can take their bill and zipper them and unzipper them as they oil their feathers. And each feather along the length of the wing uh, has a slightly different size and shape that's coordinated with all of the others. There's no way <laughs> at all <laughs> feathers could just arise by time and chance. They are marvels, masterpieces, miraculous examples of creation.
Another essential element to bird flight is the air-filled bags that lie between the bird's organs. The bird's air sacs are connected to its lungs and during flight air flows through them. This arrangement rapidly feeds the bird's body tissues with life-supporting oxygen while keeping it light in the air. All birds are amazing. You know, they have a, a, a system of breathing that's not found in any other creature. The bird lung uh, is a special double tide system where you can oxygenate air both inhaling and exhaling. Unlike our lungs or the lungs of any other creature, the bird lung has back doors. And it turns out that this is important. Birds do not change the shape of their chest cavity when they breathe. You know, if you saw a bird just land from a thousand mile migration, just, just landed, would you see the chest heave as he breathed? They are stone still, no matter how hard they've been flying, you think, how do they breathe? 